If I was starting a game of Transport PV2 in 2024, this is exactly what I'd do for the best gameplay. Let's jump in and make a quick map. I'm choosing Tropical on a Megalomaniac size, and if your PC isn't that strong, huge. My map format is going to be 1 to 3, nice in the middle between all of the ranges. This gives a nice long map but there's also a bit of width to it so you can expand and make some more detailed setups. Town slow and industry slow. Town slow because you want to build up your towns instead of placing lots of towns, it's a very common mistake. People will place a lot of towns next to each other to try and make a big city. Why don't instead you just grow the one town to a massive city in size? Much better way of doing things. And industry slow because the map's so big, there's going to be so many industries. You can go up to medium industries here but I recommend low. And these are the settings that I use for a tropical map. If you prefer one of the other maps, I have a video covering the best settings for the other two types and then come back and finish this video. Now one of the most important things to do when you're making a new game is to unselect one type of map and press custom. This is so important because by default you only have 33% of the vehicles in game. Go over to advanced settings and then underneath vehicles you can select all and that locks every single vehicle in the game. I would set all of these to the default aside from public and private transport which I put on 200% as well as cargo supply to 200%. This means that cities will grow a lot quicker and it's only really useful if you have a strong PC. So if that's not you, don't put extra strain on your computer and leave it on 100%. Start year 1850. This is great because it allows you to lay the groundwork down which the later years do not allow you to do. I usually play on hard but I recommend medium as medium allows you just enough wiggle room to have the money to be able to afford nice looking things as well as functional things, whereas hard is just pure functional. If you're brand new to the game, of course go for easy, but this doesn't really matter because both of these you'll be making plenty of money. It's not a hard game. Now my personal preference, I like to start a game with two cargo types and then later when I get to about 1950, I switch it up to six cargo types. Now this is because by the time of about 1950, I've already set up the game and pretty much maxed it out. What I mean by this is I've set up loads of cargo hubs and distribution hubs, which basically do all the work of cargo for you in Transport Fever 2, which I'll show you later in this video, and they're really OP. So I like to switch this up to six cargo types just to give me one extra challenge after the 1950s. And then I also turn industry closure off because me personally, I'm not a big fan of it. Now let's talk about the most overpowered way of doing cargo in this game. Hands down, it literally does it for you that no one's using. I discovered this the other day and it absolutely blew my mind. Let me share this information for you. In our case, we're using a bit of a longer map, so we only need three main hubs. But if you're using a square map, you need five because you need one in the middle and four surrounding it on each side of the compass. Because we're using a longer map in this instance, we're going to have two on either side, north and south, and one in the middle. So by dividing the map into sections and connecting all of the industries up to these hubs, you can actually do a really cool thing where the game will automatically sort the cargo for you. Now the first thing you want to do is connect all of the raw resources like stone and coal and iron. And all of these go into what's called a sorting hub where they're assembled. When you've got all these resources going to this place but nowhere to take them, you need to take an outbound train which is going to carry all of those resources needed to all the factories in the surrounding area. Now this is step one. This goes a lot more in depth and this is going to cover you for the beginning of the game, the very early game, maybe up until about 1880, 1900 at the push. So what do we do then? There's a way of automating this even more. So take your sorting yards and we're going to connect them to a distribution hub. The distribution hub is in the center of the map. Now you might have already placed a sorting yard here and that's fine because we can reuse this as a distribution hub and get rid of the sorting yard. So now all your raw goods are going to go to the sorting yard and then one big train is going to carry all of those goods, take them to the distribution hub and then it's going to get offloaded onto trucks or another train which might go to another sorting hub and drop those goods off as like a second leg of the journey. And that's why it's important that all sorting yards are connected to the distribution hub so they can share resources. I hope you understand everything so far but if not feel free to leave a comment if you're struggling with anything. So here's what I cooked up earlier. We'll come back to these industries in just a sec. But let's go over and find the sorting yard. This is it just here. The video in the top right points you on how to make this sorting yard. If you're struggling to make one, but come finish this video after you've watched that. So just for an example, this stone over here gets picked up and this coal as well, which is getting dragged from that mine just over there. And that's getting dropped off over in the sorting yard. The sorting yard then loads it onto this big train here, which is then going over way over here to the distribution hub. And that is located over in the capital city, which is also important to choose as soon as you make a map. Make it as central as possible or a point of interest. And this is because you want the capital city to be the richest place where all the goods go to and also make it the biggest place. So this is a distribution hub that I've got here. As you can see, we're very rich in coal. So we've got lots of that laying about. That's where most of our money is coming from. I know it is the 5,000s, but we're still using coal. <laughs> Oops. 
<laughs> Greta Thunberg's not going to be very happy about that one. So the goods from all of the sorting yards come and end up in this place here where they're dropped off and sent to other sorting yards or loaded onto trucks and dropped off in one of these two cities that are nearby. You can see this by opening the line manager, we've got plenty of things going about through the town. So you definitely need to construct that. As for cities, this is an important one. You guys, I'm sure you don't like traffic. You're going to get it in Transport Fever 2 unless you do this. My traffic is pretty good, as you can see. Only problem we got is probably this road here. Not a lot I can do about that one, but it could be fixed a little bit. But regardless, it's all blue. I'm guessing a lot of you guys have complete red. I've seen the YouTube videos. The YouTubers get it all wrong as well. Don't worry. It's really easy to fix it. So you do a thing called lane management, which can be a bit tricky to do, but once you figure it out, it's quite easy. So I'm a car driving down this road. I'm on the right side because it's an American style map. And I'm driving down here. Now let's say that I want to go straight forward. Now okay I'm going to use this outside lane because there's only one lane. There's no other lane for me to go into this one. So in that case I added an extra lane. So waiting cars who are waiting on either lane to cross over don't mix with each other and don't get in the way of each other. And that's where the cars can flow straight through with no issues. I hope that makes sense and here's another thing that really helps. There's a mod here which I've put on screen that basically allows you to do exactly this without affecting the other side of the road because unfortunately in vanilla you have roads that end up doing this two roads in to one lane which you should never do never never do in a lot of cases you can do something like this and this is a road which has one lane on one side and two lanes on the other side and the opposite is true in the middle it switches over just like that and that allows cars to flow freely i do recommend getting that mod and now let's come back to this road here a big reason why there's a lot of traffic here is because the zoning's all wrong let's take a peek so the zoning over here is pretty good but the zoning over here is pretty bad so you want to ideally segregate your residential and your economic zones in the center of the city, we've got the commercial district. And this is basically where the money is. You want your commercial zones to be nearby your residential zone and also nearby your train station. These are the two zones that you want nearby. The residential and the commercial are the two zones that you want outside of your train station, as this is where the most of the money is gonna come from. However, you also need good connections out to your industrial zone, as first of all, we're not gonna have enough coverage for the residential and commercial zones, but also it's definitely not gonna have enough coverage for your industrial zones if they're a bit further out, which they should be. So get yourself a bit of a light rail connection or a bus depot. In my case here, I've got both light rail and buses. And of course, one of the most essential things I'm missing out on is setting ownership of your roads. No one's doing this. Why? Go to roads, tools, player ownership and set every road to owned by players. Otherwise, the AI is going to make a monstrosity. What is that? So compare this, what the AI made, over to the roads in the city that I built. Okay. Which one's better? You decide. What's going to happen with the AI roads is you're going to get massive traffic jams as there's no main roads. They're all low tier two lane roads. We're going to have so much traffic building up here. So how can we fix this big traffic problem? Let's do it now. It's uh, going to cost a bit of money, but we can do it. So this road here is supposed to be a commercial only road. Now, unfortunately, you can't zone areas like you can in city skylines, which would be really good if you could, but you can't. So you're going to have to do it manually. Press B to delete, we're going to get rid of all the buildings here that do not belong. So all of these residential zones on this road are going to have to go. And we'll leave them with these areas here that we've got on the outside, which are specifically designed for residential. Now we've just got to wait for these to fill up with commercial, but also going to fill up with residential. So just make sure you keep topping off deleting the ones that spawn and leaving commercial zones to grow in this area. That's now fixed all the traffic in this area and it'll be redirected to the residential zone. And these cars are now starting to enter the residential zone instead of the commercial residential hybrid we had just a second ago. Much better. And now how do we connect these two, do you ask? Because people got to get to work? Well, we're going to use a highway. My highway setup is actually pretty bad because in the current situation, it's not really helping. It's going around the outskirts of the city, but not really entering through the middle. Now, this seems a bit counterintuitive. However, this is deeply rooted in the fact the city will grow. It is planning for the future. The biggest plague in Transport Fever 2 is people seeing traffic on roads, going to the upgrade tool and just making the road have more lanes. It doesn't fix your problems guys, don't do it. You have to plan these things. And planning I have done. This motorway or freeway or whatever you want to call it, loops around the outside of the city and this is accounting for city growth. All these roads here will eventually be filled up with industrial buildings and the same could be said over here for Pretoria. These buildings are going to advance over here into these and they'll merge in the middle at a big industrial zone. Make sure as well you've got plenty of off ramps so people can use the freeway freely. 
The AI in this game works by going from the shortest destination, so you want to make sure that these roads in the city are a bit slower. I believe these guys are set to about 30 miles an hour, where the freeway set to about 70, and that means that even if the road's slightly longer, which it will be honestly, the AI is still going to choose to take the freeway. This little dude is doing just that. Trains! Passenger trains. You need three types of passenger trains. You need cross-country trains, you need intercity trains, and you need commuter trains. The biggest one of those is going to be commuter trains, which are these little guys just here. Now these guys are the backbone of the empire. They're going to be these cheap little slower trains, and these are going to connect up to every single city, point to point, stops at every station, no through services. They're going to usually be full of commuters, which are going to go to near cities for work or commuting back to home. And these guys are going to make a fair bit of money, but nothing crazy really. And these are trains for the working class, which is great until you want to stimulate economic growth in your cities which is where you need to make trains for the upper class and they come in in express or intercity and cross-country services this is an express train which is a sort of a medium ground it stops at some stations but only the big places it skips the small towns and of course we have the cross-country service now the cross-country service is a train that is only going to stop at three stations that's if you're using a long map one to three one to four one to five if you're using a square map you could even go less than that one or two stops make sure the stops are not close together as the speed acceleration on this is bloody terrible do not use the acceleration on this train this train is not even at full speed yet this of course applies to all trains in the game and you don't have to obviously use these exact models you can use any train for example you can use any train on this list here it pretty much does the job just make sure you know what you're doing let's take some examples here locomotives you're obviously not going to use the alco hh as a cross-country service because it has a low top speed and a low pulling power you may want to use this as a commuter service that could work so that's for example just grab a commuter train and we'll do that for the sake of the video trains with low pulling power aren't going to want to have too many carriages so we'll keep it simple we'll go for a, a nice cheap carriage maybe one of these guys and two of those and that's going to do the job of a commuter train at least a cheap one we can do better these guys are much better honestly one of the best if not the best commuter train in the game has got to be the ra2 it's a great little train the same can be said for the intercity trains let's take a look at let's say one of these steam trains we want one that's got pretty decent pulling power and pretty decent top speed but also keeping the costs down so the a35 is a great choice in the time period that it unlocks because it's decently cheap and it has good top speed and good pulling power. This is going to allow you to add a few more carriages as well. Just make sure to hover over this and watch your power grade here so you have a bit of a clue on your acceleration. Then you can modify this and now as you can see this is on the line. Ideally you'd want to drop the length of this train significantly because a few really long trains aren't going to really be the best option because people are going to have to wait ages for a train to come to the station. You want as regular service as possible while making a profit. So I might drop this down a couple of carriages. That looks better. And this cross country train we can take a look at the sort of train that we want to put on here for a cross-country service. I'm just going to randomly scroll. Ah, there we go. The class A4 or the Hiawatha. I got a million comments last time. I pronounced that wrong and I think that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. But is that right? Let me know in the comments. Hiawatha. Great top speed. Great pulling power. Very expensive. Buy that. And also, we're going to get some train cars don't make the mistake of buying train cars that are too slow in top speed we got 160 is this top speed so we're going to make sure that the train cars also go 160 that's only 60 that's 180 can we get one that's 160 because that might be a bit cheaper it's not looking like it so we might have to go for a more expensive one we can grab the 150 one two three four five and then it says mediocre that'll do me modify that still goes decently fast now remember your cross-country services are the long guys it doesn't really matter so much about the acceleration it matters about the top speed so you could actually go a lot longer with this if you wanted to and as long as it fits inside the platform that's not going to be an issue and that's simply because of how long a distance it's going to cover now we've covered all the different types of trains and by the way this exact same applies to your cargo trains the trains that deliver to the sorting yard are going to be your fast acceleration low top speed trains just like this little train here that's pulling your intercity type trains are going to be the ones that are going to deliver over to the distribution hub and then there's an equivalent of intercity and cross country it's a little bit in the middle with cargo because cargo trains really can't go that fast to call them cross country trains but then again you want to go as fast as possible with the intercity train so it's almost a cross country but not quite so it's a bit in the middle there and that's going to be these guys and these are the ones that deliver all of the types of cargo raw from the sorting yard over to the distribution hub now we've covered all the train types so let's move on. Let's talk boats and also this influences the later game when you get planes it's the same thing. Boats and planes are the same as cross country services. You want to have few stops and they want to go long distance. There is an exception to the rule but I'll cover that in a sec. So we can see that we have one stop near the capital city, we have one stop in the extremities of the map all the way over here and the same can be said in the other extremity of the map. 
which is going to be over here. You want few stops and a big capacity on those boats. Same can be said for planes, you want to have one central just outside the capital city and you want to have one in each of the extremities. How do you connect these up? Pretty simple. Three routes, one's going to go from the very south to the very north, I call this cross map air and the other two are ones that are going to connect north and south. So this is a northern plane, this links the north to the capital, and this is a southern air, this links the south to the capital. And those are the only ones you need, feel free to also add airports on the corners of the map, just by going out here and placing another airport on the very extremity, and then you could call that the United States, China, whatever, and you could pretend that that's a plane going outbound to another place. Now what about the exception to the rule? Because in the early game it is very expensive to build trains and train infrastructure, you might want to have some boats connecting small islands like Gateway up to the mainland where they can get off a boat and transfer onto a train and go further into the country. That's everything I would do in 2024 starting a new game of Transport Fever 2 to get the best gameplay experience. There's many tips in this video which are brand new to YouTube. If you're struggling with anything, don't be afraid to leave a comment. I might be able to help you out. But don't go anywhere. We've missed a really important thing. We've got all of this infrastructure, but how are we going to get trains to the location and not get traffic jams? That's why you need to watch this video so you don't have a huge crash on your network mid-game. Really important. Check it out.